going on everyone, especially Packer fans. Welcome to my first Packer seven round mock draft. This is before the combine. This is subject to change. So don't freak out over the picks that I make because they'll probably change in the long run. So right now, I'm gonna start off with our first pick, which is round one, pick 29. And if you watched my mock draft video, on Thursday, I think it was. Um, you'll know that I had the Packers picking Sidney Jones, the cornerback out of Washington. Now, Sidney Jones has ball skills and instincts to tilt the odds in his favor when quarterbacks throw his way. Uh, he has the toughness and desire to make plays on the ball. Similar to uh, his former teammate at Washington, Marcus Peters. Uh, which is someone who I compare him to because they play a lot, they play really similarly. Although Sidney Jones must prove that he can add muscle without losing speed. He's 5'10, 5'11 at 180 pounds. Now, while that's not everything, it's kind of thin frame, but I think he can add muscle, but hopefully he wouldn't lose speed because of that. So, I have us taking Sidney Jones. I think he'll be a great corner for us, especially since we cut Sam Shields, which I think was the right move to do after how many concussions he sustained. Plus, we just need a corner so bad. If you, I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up doubling down on corner, but in this mock draft, I do not have us doubling down at corner. I only have us taking Sidney Jones. So, in round two, pick 29... I am taking Ryan Anderson, the edge rusher, outside linebacker, from Alabama. Now, Ryan Anderson has a high football IQ and a history as a winner. I mean, he went to Alabama. He's a winner. I know they didn't win the national championship, but they did last year. And Alabama's perennially a competitor to win the national championship. So, he does have a history as a winner. He has a disciplined, assignment-based approach to the game, and that should resonate with defensive coordinators, and hopefully that resonates with a guy like Dom Capers. Although his lack of length and athletic traits caused him to fall down to my second-round choice. He'd be a first-rounder if it wasn't for that. But he should be a safe pick here, and he has a potential to be a long-time starter. And I think that this is due because Peppers is probably not coming back. And there's a chance that Nick Perry might not resign. I hope he does. But this just adds depth either way. At a position that we need. So at number... at In round three, pick 29. I'm jumbling my words here. Round three, pick 29. I have the Packers taking Bucky Hodges. Tight end out of Virginia Tech. Bucky Hodges can line up inside or outside, while his size and ability to work all three levels of the field is very appealing. Um, and the competitiveness of the NFL could toughen him up as a blocker. There are questions about his route running and his uh, inconsistent hands, but I think that's something that you can coach. It is. Um... I know that we have Richard Rodgers and Jared Cook, but uh, no knock on Richard Rodgers. I love the kid. I do. But we need a more consistent, quicker tight end. We really do. And I'm not knocking on him because that catch in Detroit was one of the best catches I'd ever seen. But I feel like Bucky Hodges and Jared Cook and... Two tight end sets would be a great pair right there. So next, in round four, I have us take with the 28th pick in the fourth round, I have us taking Samaj P. Ryan, the running back out of Oklahoma. Samaj P. Ryan is a physical runner who can create extra yardage through power. Something that we loved Eddie Lacy for before he gained all that extra weight. I know we're probably going to re-sign Lacy, but... This is good insurance in case that one year doesn't work out. Um, Samaj P. Ryan can be a complimentary banger type of running back um, 
for a slasher like Ty Montgomery. Uh, he's an immediate short yardage and goal line option. And this guy holds the single game FBS record for most yards in a game. Think about that. That's really good. <laughs> I think it was like somewhere in the 300s or... No, it was like 200 something. I don't know. I'll have to look in on that. But the point is, he holds that record. And he also has Adrian Peterson's uh, career rushing yards record at Oklahoma. This guy is a beast. I know he split carries with Joe Mixon. And I know a lot of people want Joe Mixon. But I don't want that, that media circus right there after he punched a woman at a bar. I don't think we need that kind of media attention. We're not the Patriots, we're not the Cowboys. Anyways, I have us taking Samaj P. Ryan as our potential uh, power back of the future. We have two picks in round five. With the first pick in our fifth round, at pick 28, I have us taking D'Angelo Brown, defensive tackle out of Louisville. Now, D'Angelo Brown is one of the strongest players in college football. There's a video of him online repping 225 pounds on the bench press 40 times. I don't know if you're aware of that, but that's really good. He had 14 tackles for loss this past season, leading Louisville's defense. And he's a third-team All-ACC pick with 41 tackles and three sacks last year. I would love to have this guy on our front seven and as our potential nose tackle. That would be amazing. I would love that. So anyways, moving on. I doubled down on our front seven in the fifth round, and I had us take Keontae Davis from UT Chattanooga, defensive end. Keontae Davis is well-built with adequate power at the point of attack and has outstanding production in college. Although he may lack twitch and fluidity in space to make his mark as an edge player. However, he has some play traits that could make him an upfield three technique if he could pile on enough weight. He's a project player, but I think that he'd be good on our defense. Now this might be a coincidence, this next pick, round six, uh, pick 28. But I have us taking the strong safety out of Colorado, Tedrick Thompson. The reason why I say that that's a coincidence is because our GM is named Ted Thompson. <laughs> so anyways, Tedrick Thompson is an instinct of cover safety with strong ball skills and a history of production during his time at Colorado. He does lack physicality to operate around the box, but he does have the football IQ and playmaking skills to be drafted and add depth at the position. And depth is what we need at the safety position. We only had three safeties on our roster last year. That's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, we had... Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Beast, Morgan Burnett, also a Beast, and Kenchel Bryce, eh. I think Tedrick Thompson would be great as a backup for Morgan Burnett should he get injured. And next, with our seventh round pick, pick 29 in the seventh round, I have us taking Chad Hansen, the wide receiver out of Cal. And I know what you're thinking, another wide receiver out of Cal? What are you thinking, Nick? I'm thinking that we need depth at the wide receiver position. For, for goodness sake, people, Jordy Nelson was playing with cracked ribs in that NFC championship. We need more weapons. We do. Now, Chad Hansen has a good combo of size and speed with the ability to win the deep ball. Um, he has average separation, but I believe his draft stock could actually rise, like skyrocket if he has a good combine. I'm saying his stock could rise to second or third round uh, level of play. So... I have Chad Hansen as our last pick in this draft for now. Now keep in mind, people, 
This is just before the combine. So this is due to change, probably. Um, but right now, this is who I see us having, and this is what I would do if I were Ted Thompson. So anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this mock draft. There will be more to come. And go Pack Go!